we're off. It's epic being here. Manaslu Base Camp is located in the Manaslu region of Nepal. This is one of the most beautiful and rarely visited parts of the country. Close to the border of Tibet, not only will you experience authentic Nepali villages and life in the area, you also feel the crossover of the Tibetan traditions on this side of the country. Mount Manaslu is the 8th highest mountain in the world standing at 8,163 meters or 26,781 feet. Manaslu in Sanskrit is Manasa, meaning soul or intellect. As I mentioned, this is a rarely visited region of Nepal. Compared to the popular Everest or Annapurna region where foot traffic is heavy, the Manaslu area gives you a more authentic feel to it being that it's not as crowded just yet which creates more opportunity for you to fully engage with the surroundings and interact with the locals. That said, with years to come, the country is seeing more and more interest from tourists in this region and ongoing developments are happening at this moment to accommodate for the growth of foot traffic in the area. I highly suggest visiting this region now if you want to fully experience Manaslu without the crowd. In terms of which season is best to visit, spring from March through May and autumn from September through December are ideal trekking conditions. I've been to Nepal in both of these seasons and I prefer the spring season for its clear skies, a bit warmer and consistent weather but the downside is this is peak tourist season meaning there's more foot traffic on the trails. If you really must avoid the crowd, my advice is to go for shoulder season. This is around May or December nearing the end of the peak season. The length of the trek varies depending on your itinerary and the level of your fitness. In addition, many, including myself, typically combines it with another trek. In my case, I've added the Annapurna Circuit trek after it. If you were to do this trek, it typically takes around 2 weeks, 13 to 18 days to complete the trek. As with many treks in Nepal, I always try to pack as light as possible. You may also get a porter to take your main backpack so you just have your day pack with you throughout the whole journey. Whichever option you choose, I still recommend packing as light as possible. Here's a quick list of what you need to pack. A backpack, a sleeping bag, a cap, a tube, or a beanie, a buffer, a jacket, a windbreaker, thermal long sleeves, shirts, trekking pants, thermal pants, sweatpants, undergarments, trekking shoes, sandals or running shoes for you to wear around the tea house, socks, for toiletries you need shampoo, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and for accessories you need trekking poles if you need it, crampons is a must, a solid refillable water bottle, a camera, portable charger if you have some, sunglasses, sunscreen, and gloves. And for miscellaneous items you need a passport, cash, permits, and travel insurance. This part of Nepal have a bit more restrictions than the rest. For one, you cannot be in the area alone and you must have a guide who has an official license. The permits that you need are the Manaslu Conservation Area and the Annapurna Conservation Area Permit as you will be in these regions. In addition, if you plan on heading to Sum Valley, you need a separate permit for that as well called the Tum Valley Restricted Area Permit. The cost for the Manaslu region varies depending on the season. The Manaslu Restricted Area Permit from September through November is about 100 US dollars or 125 Canadian dollars and 15 US dollars or 19 Canadian dollars for each additional day. The Manaslu Restricted Area Permit from December through August it's 75 US dollars or 94 Canadian dollars and 10 US dollars or 13 Canadian dollars for each additional day. The Manaslu Conservation Area Permit and Annapurna Conservation Area Permit is 30 US dollars or 37 Canadian dollars each so you're looking at a total of about 60 US dollars or 75 Canadian dollars. Depending on the trekking agency you go with, most of the time this is covered by the agency and they take care of everything for you. If you must get your own, the Nepal Tourism Board office is located in Kathmandu where you could get your permits. Don't forget to bring your passport, insurance papers, a visa, and four passport size photos. If you don't have a passport size photos with you, you may take them in the office as well for an additional cost. As I mentioned earlier, the itinerary varies depending on what you like to include or exclude during your trek. With this itinerary, I'll take you through the most common itinerary and that is the Manaslu Base Camp and Larke Pass. On day one, you'll be starting at Kathmandu and from there, you'll be driving to Sotikola. This is about a 7-8 to eight hour drive. The road can be dusty and bumpy at times but overall, it offers great views along the way. 
On day two, you'll be kicking off your trek in Sote Cola and heading to Macha Cola. This is a fairly light five to six hour day with a 200 meter elevation gain. The next day, you'll be leaving Macha Cola to head to Jaga, and today is gonna be a steady incline. You will pass through different villages and will be crossing many bridges on this day, as well as throughout this whole trek, actually. On day four, it's another day of steady incline to prime you for the weeks ahead. And on this day, you're heading up to Dang at 1,860 meters or 6,102 feet. You will also get your permit checked here for the region. On day five, you're set to go from Deng to Namrung, and on this day, you'll get closer to the border of Tibet, just about six kilometers away. Most of the locals in this area are originally from Tibet, and it offers a unique experience to see these villages with people from Tibet, as well as a bridge between the two lifestyles from these two countries. For day six, you'll be heading up to Lo, and this is a half day hike. There's a lot of developments happening in this village as it seems to be a favorite stop for many trekkers in the region. It is also such a vibrant and beautiful village. I highly recommend exploring it a bit after you get here as you will have the rest of the day to explore and roam around. Make sure you check out the monastery which will be good for acclimatization. From here, you will get a glimpse of Manaslu. It is another half day trek up towards Sama Gompa. This is going to be your home base for the next couple of days and where you'll be heading up to Manaslu base camp. Once you settled in, I recommend doing some acclimatization at Birendra Ta'al, which is a beautiful lake with gorgeous mountain backdrops, including Manaslu. You'll also pass through a serene monastery. Going up here is a perfect way to end your day and it also gets you ready for Manaslu base camp the following day. This is the day, a 1500 meter plus ascent to Manaslu base camp. The switchbacks, the never-ending incline will test you physically and mentally. Nonetheless, making it to the top is extremely rewarding. I suggest bringing food on the go as well and just have them on your way back down as it might be a bit too cold at the top for a celebration meal. After getting up to Manaslu base camp, today is an easy 600 to 700 meter elevation gain to Fungen Gompa, a serene wide open area which has a monastery in the middle of the towering Himalayan mountains. On the way here, you will get remarkable views of the Himalayan range that seems endless. This spot also has a different perception of Manaslu. Bring food on the go with you on this day to have it with the stunning views when you get up here. On day 10, you'll finally be leaving Samagompa and heading up to Samdo. You will get to Samdo about midday, which will give you an opportunity to do some acclimatization up at a viewpoint nearby. And yes, I highly suggest doing some acclimatization on this day. Even though you've been trekking on a daily non-stop for the past week and a bit, I highly suggest doing some acclimatization. From Samdo, it's an ascent towards Dharamshala, where you'll most likely sleep in what I call a box. Because it's another half day getting here, do some more acclimatization once you've settled in. You'll be surrounded by the beautiful Himalayan giants and it'll most likely be a cold evening so be sure to dress warm. In fact, since you need to wake up early the next day to go through Larke Pass, I recommend wearing what you'll be wearing for your trek the next day so you don't have to change first thing in the morning. For day 12, you'll be leaving Dharamshala to head to Bimtang through Larke Pass. It's gonna be an early one on this day, but trust me, it's well worth it. You'll be catching the sunrise on the way up, and if you have crampons or hiking poles, they're going to come in handy on this day as the trail will be snowy and icy. It'll also be dark as you make your way up, so make sure you have a torch with you and pace yourself. Larke Pass is the oldest and longest pass in Nepal. This pass is definitely not for the faint of heart. There are a lot of endless hills, snow was extremely thick and inclined and switchbacks is gonna be real. Going down after the pass is just as challenging. Once you get down, you'll be settling in in Bimtang. On day 13, you'll be heading from Bimtang to Dadapani. Your descent towards civilization continues. And on day 14, this is when you leave for Kathmandu. So is Manaslu worth it? Absolutely, the minimal foot traffic in the area at the moment is very, very attractive if you want an authentic Nepal experience. Also, since you'll get closer to the border of Tibet, seeing the bridge of the two lifestyles in two different countries offers a unique perception along the journey. The stunning views and landscape of the Manaslu region alone is more than enough to say it is well worth it. Here are my final tips of doing this trek. Make sure you eat and hydrate properly, get an ample amount of rest, sleep early to make sure you're ready for the next day, slow down, go your own pace as this is not a race and take as many breaks as you want. 
acclimatization is your friend. Stretch before and after you trek. Cost of food tends to rise the higher or deeper you get in the region, as well as other treks in Nepal. Dalbot will not only get you the best bang for your buck, but it is also very nutritious to keep you going throughout your trek. And that's gonna wrap up this guide. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a big thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.